Do I chip you, Nick? Playing the game? Yeah. It's a pretty cool game. You want to play? It looks amazing. Yeah, yeah, I do. Tell me a little bit about it. Well, this is Outward Realms, and Outward Realms is a sci-fi futuristic game featuring Next suits, and hover tanks, Next tanks. Uh, yeah, exactly. And it plays like big army style, alternating activations. Ooh, I like that. Yes, I really like that too. And some very unique elements that I haven't encountered before. Hmm. Some very cool how it works with interactions with dice rolling, and it's very streamlined. Interesting. Like the rulebook's not very big. Right. So like easy to get into, but hard to master kind of. Like. Plays clean. Right. I don't feel I've mastered it yet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you want to play with me? I really do. So, welcome to Outward Realms. Uh, as we said before, it's a sci-fi setting, really cool rule system, um, alternating activations, which I really love. And uh, unique rules for all the different units and models of tanks and mechs and monsters and all the stuff that goes together. Cloaking devices and shields and rail cannons, it's going to be great. A small rule set, but it seems like there's some real tactical depth to it. Mm -hmm. So to play a game of Outer Realms, you need the miniatures, you need some dice, you need some tape measures, and uh, place to play. In Outer Realms, you choose a force, you build your army, there's points based to the different units, and you build your army to a certain amount of points to match your opponent. Models are taken in units, a unit of five augment soldiers, for instance. They're purchased as a group, as is yeah. from the list. They will move together and shoot together. They have to stay in a formation. They have to be at least two inches apart from each other or four inches vertically if they're in some sort of like terrain or something like that. They're gonna move together, as I said, and they always gotta stay in range of each other. And if they can't, their first action has to be to move together. So you always wanna keep those units together. Sometimes you'll have a single unit, like a big tank or a mech, and that thing will be all by itself with no other accompanying units. So before us, we have two armies of, as we stated, we have the realm. Mm. Humans defending and attacking and just really getting in there. Mm. And we're here, the Batra. The aliens. Yeah, the slippery frog people, <laughs> cloaking technology and jumping abilities. Lots of really in your face, hand-to-hand -hand tactics. They are scary in close they combat. They, they can dish it out. They really they can. They can. And those cloaking devices are hard to get through. Every unit in Outward Realms has a character sheet, or data card, I guess you'd call it, that outlines their abilities, their weapons, and their stats. At the top here, you'll see a name and what type of unit it is. For instance, an infantry, a heavy infantry, a construct, etc. Underneath that is space to claim objectives. Underneath that is how many action points they get when they activate, how many things they get to do. Right beside it, your activation limit. How many times that unit can be activated? Because you can actually activate a unit multiple times. Underneath that, you'll see a movement stat, an attack stat, an armor stat, a wound stat. For the realm, the humans, they actually get shields. Aha! That's a stat you won't see on other armies' cards. But below with all that, you'll find the special rules, stuff that they can do, special actions, anything specific to that exactly. unit. On the next card, you'll find the weapons. This is where the rubber hits the road. This is the fun stuff. <laughs> so yeah, you will find both projectile and melee weapons on this side. You'll have the range, how often they shoot, the rate of fire, damage. The, you'll have to look to the other card to find out what those weapons hit on, the actual two hit number, their attack number. But everything else you need to know about how these units deal damage is on that second card. How many weapons are here are how many weapons they're equipped with. If you only see one weapon, they only have one weapon. If they have multiples of the same weapons, you'll see multiples of the same weapons listed. Makes it really simple. As we said before, Outward Realms is an alternating activation game. I will choose to activate a unit, then you will choose to activate a unit. And when we activate that unit... Which gains you an amount of actions based upon the unit that you activate. For instance, if I were to activate this unit of Augment Soldiers here, I would get two activation points. With those two, I can choose from a list of different actions that they can take. So, some of the activations I can choose is to move, which is, means I would put my measuring tape, I would look at the movement profile on their unit sheet, and then I would move it the appropriate number of inches. Alternatively, I could shoot, which I would then pick a target, shoot their weapons, roll the dice, and see what happens. Another activation is I could engage you in melee, charge up the board and try to fight you in melee. Each action will take a different amount of action points. And once you're out of action points, your unit is done its activation and it moves to the opposing player. At which point I get to spend an activation token and then use my activation points to engage you. One of the cool things about this game is just because a unit has been activated doesn't mean it's done for the turn. Mm -hmm. Most units can be activated multiple times. In fact, some units can be activated more than twice. 
and so you could pretend, potentially get some of your big tanks firing multiple times. However, if you do that, you're giving up opportunities to move up the field or reinforce other, other sections. You only get so many activations total for a turn. But it really allows you to dive in and do the things you want to do in the game. Yeah. By allowing the same unit to activate multiple times in a row sometimes to get one mission accomplished. You can really play with how the activations work yeah. to, to make this game a really tactical experience. So in one of your turns, you may not activate your entire army. No. You may only activate half of it or even a smaller amount based upon what your strategy is or what the opponent's strategy is. So it really makes a fluid and dynamic game where you really have to react to what they're doing and be proactive in getting your units into position to shoot or fight. All right, we're gonna play a little mini game, all right? Yeah. I've got one unit of Augment Soldiers. Okay. I've got one Augment Major, mm -hmm. basically a human commander dude. Mm -hmm. And then I've got the heavy exosuit, oh, yeah. mag cannons. <laughs> so I've got my Batra Huntmaster, my leader, yep. who helps my guys move faster. Scary. I've got some Batra Stalkers. These yep. are some heavy infantry with like very they, powerful hand-to-hand -hand abilities. They look like they have like essentially like sledgehammer fists. A little bit like that, yeah. And lastly, a Batra Shikari Hall. This is a, a flying tank with transport capacity and big guns, it's he, gonna be great. And he can cloak too. Everything can cloak. I oh. can just go invisible when I want to, yeah. Cool. It's gonna be great. First thing we do after we set up our terrain and choose our mission, which in this case is just kill the enemy. Cool. <laughs> we roll to see who's gonna be the attacker and who's gonna be the defender. All right. Uh, I'm gonna roll the dice here. There uh, we go. Okay, so I got a four. Tycho's got a one. So because I won, the defender will get to roll on what kind of deployment type we're using and stuff like that. But we're just gonna deploy here and here just for the sample game here, but the attacker has to deploy the first units. Gotcha. Now, we will deploy all the units, starting with the, the big units, the, they call them constructs. So I only have one construct, it's the heavy mech exosuit, um, and we're gonna deploy him right here. Then it goes to yourself, and you have to deploy all your heavy stuff. All right, so I'm gonna deploy my construct, but I'm gonna do something a little bit special. I am gonna deploy all my infantry inside my construct, so all these frog people are gonna deploy inside. Including the big guy. Including your HQ. Huntmaster, yep. Awesome. All right, so you actually have nothing else to deploy. That's it, I'm done. Next we would go to heavy infantry. I don't have any. You do have some, but they're in the transport, sure. so you won't deploy them again. Lastly, we would go to our infantry and then our skirmishers. Neither of us have skirmishers. I have some infantry. Cool. So I'm gonna deploy all my infantry. First, I'm gonna deploy my infantry in this crater right here. I'm deploying them in this crater because I eventually would like to take advantage of the cover that it offers. They have to actually physically take cover right. as an action. And my commander, the uh, Augment Major, yeah. is gonna deploy right over here, ready to support both these units here. So attack and defender, that's all done with. Now we get to decide who actually gets to do the first activation. Mm -hmm. Both players roll a d6. Oh, you oh, got it. Oh, I got it first, excellent. The realm the of realm. humans will go first. Both of us are gonna take our activation tokens and normally you get 10 just for this uh, practice game. Each of us are gonna take five tokens. So my first activation, I'm gonna take my activation token okay. and I'm gonna put it on these augment soldiers. I'm feeling they're squishy, they're gonna die quick. Mm. I want them to take some cover in here. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use one action point to move them, which means you move them their full uh, up to their full movement. And you actually get three activation points because of how close you are to your commander. This yes, point. this commander, normally they only get two action points. This commander, if you're within six inches of him, allows him to get another activation point. Very powerful. It's very, very powerful. I'm actually just gonna move to the edge of the crater. I wanna be just a little bit closer, being able to be better in range. As long as you're touching that terrain piece, you can count as being in cover. You, if you take an action to do you so. You bet, which is my very next action, is going to be take cover. Oh, there you go. I'm gonna put this little token here. They are now in cover, which means... I'm gonna get minus one if I decide to shoot. Exactly. They're gonna be a little more hard to kill. So I'm gonna shoot into this unit here. I've only got the one you unit You only got the one unit! It's very simple how you do a shooting attack in Outward Realms. First thing you do is declare which weapon you're gonna use. I only have one weapon to use, the Gatling Mag Cannon. The next thing you do is you declare a target. I'm gonna declare this guy right here, this tank. And next, you perform a range check. I have 18 inch range. Your base is within range of my base, oh, yeah. so I can fire at you. Then lastly, I have to do a line of sight check. Okay. Mm -hmm. You look down, can the model fire? So if any of these models were blocked by, say, a big terrain feature and couldn't see them, 
Well, in this case, for instance, I could fire one of them, maybe two of them, but these ones could not fire. Right. If there's something in the way. Gotcha. Lastly, if there's something with the construct type mm. blocking it, if there's even a little bit of it blocking it, even if it's a friendly model, no line of sight. Ah, so these things are big and get in the way and exactly. you can't shoot through them. So, assuming that your line of sight is clear, you then proceed to the attack sequence and roll dice. All right. So all I have to do is look at my sheet here. It says I get three dice per guy. That's the rate of fire. Yep. It is eight, 18 inch range. It is damage one. I look at my attack value of three plus, and that's what I've got to get to hit you. Gotcha. All right. Rolling the dice. Oh my. Uh, oh yeah, that's pretty good. My army has a couple special rules. One of them is that any rolls of one, I can reroll to shoot. Here we go. I hit absolutely everything. Oh my word. This is a good turn. That's terrifying. So there's no other roll to make. There's no to wound roll or anything like that. It just goes straight to your dice, which you roll. To I get to, to try yourself. and save myself. And my Venator hole has an armor value of three or higher. So I'm just trying to hit threes. Uh-oh. I did not roll nearly as well as you no, did. No, you so did not. I end up taking six damage. Six because damage. Because each one of those shots does one damage. Yeah, he has 18 wounds, so, so I'm actually pretty much okay. It tickled him. You put down some wound markers there to indicate that you've taken six damage, and then my activation is done. I don't get to do anything else until his activation because I'm out of action points. All right, so you're activating your... Shikari Hall. Yes. Say that three times fast. Shikari Hall, Shikari Hall, Shikari Hall. I guess that's not that hard. No, not really. <laughs> How many action points do you have? I have three action points. You guys are speedy. They're speedy. That's not even with a bonus from a uh, commander or something like that. I'm going to start by taking a, a little bit of revenge. So I'm going to activate a special action. It okay. costs me no action points. Oh, that's fun. Uh, called Big Game Hunter. That looks like a big game. Yeah, he's, he's big game. So <laughs> against Constructs, this allows me to reroll all oh. my shots. So he's going to lay into him pretty hard. Okay. So that doesn't actually cost me anything. So then my next action point, I'm actually going to shoot. And I'm assuming you're shooting the big guy. I'm going to shoot the big guy. We're going to, we're, we're going to trade some blows on our big guys. All right, and let's see do where it. we get to there. So my Shikari Hall has two repeating mini slicer guns. Mm. So these have three shots a piece. So the first thing you have to do when you declare a target. Declare your shooting. Uh, I pick my target. Then you check your range. Oh, yeah. Constructs to constructs. constructs. You measure from the hull yep. to any point on the hull. Cool. And then lastly, perform a line of sight check. Oh man, the terrain <laughs> jumped again. <laughs> so yes, yeah, so you have clear line of sight. Clear line of sight, no problems there. Uh, so off I go, rolling my attack. Oh, Not yeah. so hot, but... Oh right, you can reroll all of those. Oh, Whoa! look at that. That's a lot of sixes. <laughs> so that is six hits. Ooh. Now these do two damage a piece, but there's also something I should mention. They're oh, armor piercing. Yeah, so armor piercing in this is, it, you either have a weapon that has armor piercing or it does not. Every model has an armor save value. Often it's a three up. If you have armor piercing, it just becomes a six up. You either get your armor save or it's a six up to save. So in this case, you have armor piercing. My you armor need sixes. My armor is useless. I have to make a six on every single one of those dice. So that was six, six. dice. Yep. So let's see how many sixes. Let's see if I can get as many sixes as you got. Ooh. I'll take two. Okay. Two saves, four go through. We look at how much damage each shot does. Two does piece. two damage. Eight damage on my exosuit. That's a pretty solid shot. My exosuit, however, has 15 wounds. On top of that, he's got shields. And the second special rule for the humans, all their units have shields. Mm -hmm. So you gotta get past the shields of the unit first. So this unit has four shields. I take absorb four of that damage. And then you take four onto your actual wounds. Exactly. I've taken a total of four wounds. Now I've still got two action points left. Now I can't shoot twice. That is one of the few actions that you actually can't do twice. Many of the actions, like you could move multiple times, you can fight multiple times, you can't shoot multiple times. Next, I'm going to unload. Didn't you already unload? Well, I shot my weapon. <laughs> now I'm going to disgorge my, my, my payload of, of heavy infantry. Of heavy frog infantry. Right. So they get to move out right. within three inches of the vehicle that they move from. Now, this is not this unit's activation. Yep. They still have to stay there, so I might get a chance to shoot them. For my last activation point, I'm going to cloak. Oh, no. Yes. So that means that this hull is now out of line of sight. I can't shoot it whatsoever. You can't see it. Ugh. Now, there are some weapons that can still shoot it. For instance, anything that has out of line of sight weapons. However, until he decloaks, I can't shoot him. It's pretty rough. Can't even see me. Yeah, but he will have to decloak to be able to shoot me. That's and he right. can't decloak and cloak yes. at the same time. In the same activation. So I will get a chance to shoot him when he decloaks. Right. So I'll be waiting for that moment. <laughs> 
Ah. All right, so that's it for your activations. That's right. So you've done one activation, I've done one activation. I'm now gonna activate my exosuit. And when I activate him, he gets a shield back. He does. When I activate him, there's special rules. I get one of my shields regenerate, so I still have a shield. And when I activate him, I get three activation points. But because I'm within six inches of my commander, I actually get four. That's gonna be a lot of damage potentially. My very first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna shoot. Okay. Why not? So this exosuit is actually a really good shot. Lots of big guns. However, it's also really excellent in close combat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shoot you, then I'm gonna charge you and try to kill you. Okay. Let's see what happens. So for my first activation point, I'm going to declare a shot. I'm gonna choose one of its weapons to start with and then go through all the weapons in sequential order. I'm gonna actually start with the mag rifle and I'm gonna target your commander. Oh I don't my. want you to get those benefits to move. I check my range, well within range. Then I see my line of sight. I got a clean line of sight. I'm gonna shoot you. All right. He hits on threes. Most units actually hit on threes. So I hit you three times and it does two damage each. Oh my, uh, is it armor piercing? It is armor piercing, oh, which means you won't, that's you won't only no save fun on a at six. All. I think I'm going to decide to actually take the hits on my cloaked tank oh, because he the has the character, character rule. Right. Any character that gets hit can pass off those hits to a model within three inches. So take it on the tank. So my tank uh, absorbs it's, it's four It's armor piercing and it does two damage each. You know what? I'm okay with that because I wasn't able to target your tank. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll move on to the rest of his weapons. So his Gatling cannons are five shots each. Oh my. I'm gonna roll them both because I'm gonna fire them both on the same target. I'm gonna fire them at your infantry here. So we're gonna get a bunch of dice here. 10 shots. 10 shots. Hitting on threes. And I get to reroll the ones because of my army special rule. And all hit but two. You have eight hits on those guys. They are not armor piercing. I get a three up save on my stalkers. Oh, you can do it. Eight shots. Oh my oh, word, I take I some serious damage I here. see three coming through. Three. They only do one damage each. All right, luckily, my stalkers have four wounds apiece. Oh, those guys are rough. They are rough and tumble. If my armor piercing had gone into them, I think they all would have been dead. Possible. Ha <laughs> ha So I can't shoot again, because you only shoot once. However, it's time to engage. So I'm gonna do a range check really here quick. Oh, I'm actually out of range. My movement is eight, I'm nine inches away. So I have to be within my movement to be able to charge you. I'm gonna use his second action point to move. I'm gonna move up to eight inches. I'm just gonna move forward here. Uh oh, danger close. Very close, very dangerous. So for my third and fourth action point, I'm gonna engage, because engage actually costs two action points. I'm gonna declare your stalkers as a target. I'm gonna perform a check of <laughs> a range. Yes, you're good. Yeah, I'm a range. And then I move my range up to eight inches and I have to end up within one inch of your guys. Boom. Charged. Charge away. I've successfully completed an engage action, which means I also get to do an attack action in close combat with you. I'm gonna take the dice. I'm gonna check my close combat abilities. I have two fists. Each one gets two attacks. They do three damage each. Uh-oh. I use my three plus attack value, which is used for both the close combat and the shooting. I'm gonna hit on threes. So I've missed two of my attacks. However, his special rule is when I do a fight action, an engage action, he's got a devastating charge. Devastation. So that means I get to reroll all my misses. Uh-oh. Ah! <laughs> oh. These two go through, they are armor piercing. So you're gonna have to save on sixes and they do three damage each. That's a lot of damage. You got a five and a one. So Both I don't say fail. either of those. Nope. But I get to decide where that damage goes. Right, so I take six damage, but I can, it's in it's two, two hits, hits of three. Two hits of three. I have four wounds apiece. He's badly hurt. Yeah. So he's not gonna take any damage, but these guys are unhurt. So you're gonna take three wounds on each one, aren't you? That's right. So each one of my guys has one wound left. <laughs> well, I tried. If I had any more action points right now, I could use it again to fight again because you can fight multiple times. However, I'm out. You're out. Your turn, sir. Okay. I don't want to let you activate your big bad man again. So okay. I'm going to activate my stalkers. Okay. To get some revenge. My stalkers get three activation action points for their activation token. And since you're already engaged, you're just going to fight three times. I'm going to fight three oh. times and beat the something out of you. <laughs> <laughs> my first action point is to be spent on melee. <laughs> so uh, my, my melee action allows me to move two inches closer to what I'm engaged with. It's basically just to get more guys in range to be able to fight. Yeah, exactly. Because you have to be within one inch to strike blows. Here we go. So here's the first melee action. Oh. Four hits. Four hits. All right, so it goes to my save. It's armor piercing. Armor piercing. Just six ups. Let's see if I can be as lucky with sixes as you. No sixes. It's three apiece. So you did a total of 
12 damage. I, I take one onto his shield, so he's out of shields. It does 11 more damage to him. Guess how many wounds he has left? 11. 11. <laughs> <laughs> you basically punched him to death. I punched him to death real good. Yeah, boom. Maybe it was a bad idea to charge him. It was a little premature, maybe. It was premature. Mm. But you know what? It was fun. It was fun. <laughs> <laughs> so he so goes off the table. But I'm not out of the woods yet. Nope. I've still got. Well, hold on. I still have two action points left. Oh no. <laughs> so for my second action point, I'm going to take a shoot action. So I've got molecular slicers on these guns. That sounds fun. Yeah. Are these armor piercing as well? Oh yeah. Uh, of course they are. <laughs> but I am in cover, so you will get a minus one to your hit. Oh, that's very, very true. So I normally hit on threes, I'll be hitting on fours. I get one shot a piece. Here we go. Three major, oh yeah, oh, take that. Only one hit. It does, this. three damage. Whew. All right, so it's armor piercing, so I have to save on a six. Give me that six. No, it fails. So it just goes straight through and annihilates a guy. I think actually you've got two shields on that. That is true. So the shield will get devastated first. And then one guy is going to take one wound because they've got two apiece. Yes, that is true. So one guy is still alive. So that did nothing. Well, I, I wounded a guy and you've, the shields are down. <laughs> start. It's a start. It's a start. It's a start. And because you're pretty good shooting, yeah. I think I'm just going to cloak. Oh, very smart. So basically the only unit I can target is your commander right. who can pass off his wounds to other units. That's right. All right. Well, goes to my activation. I have three activation tokens left. So I got to be careful with these because I know these guys are coming for me. Oh, they're coming. I can't shoot them because they are cloaked. Yep. So I'm going to activate these guys in cover here. All right. So I'm going to activate them. So they can be activated a total of two times. So this is it for them. Because they have an activation limit on their card. Two times. That's pretty cool. So I'm going to fall. I'm going to move backwards here, which means I lose my cover, but I'm hoping to get farther away from you. So to lessen some charges there. This crater though, however, is rough terrain, which means I'm going to move only half my movement value. They have a movement value of six. So they're going to move three inches. So they're just going to move three inches back. Give you just a little bit of harder time getting into combat with me. So that was one action point of my three for having a commander nearby. And then I'm gonna shoot you. The only guy I can shoot is your commander. Right. So I'm gonna shoot him anyways. I'm 18 inches away. I'm gonna shoot all the dice at once because they're all shooting at the same target. They get three dice each. I get to hit on threes and I roll ones because of my army special rule. Oh, I hit everything. That? Wow. Take that commander. Oh my, okay. They're not armor piercing. They're not armor piercing. So you get your full save. I'm gonna take five of them on my commander and the rest of them oh, on my tank. Oh, interesting. The save on my commander is three up. You fail one. I fail one. He takes a wound. Singular wound. And then for the hulk. Oh, you take four. So you have two wounds left on him. I do. Oh, I got so close to taking him out. So close. So close. Well, I can't shoot again for my last activation point. So I'm just going to take cover again. All right. So it's your activation. I think I'm far enough away. You can't get me this turn. Oh, we'll see about that. All right. So I'm going to activate my stalkers yet again. Okay. How many times can they be activated? Three times. Ugh. They're going to activate. They get three action points for their first action point. I'm going to take a zero act point action which is to move because what? I am within six what? inches of my Huntmaster. What? Which allows them to give an aggressive leap. I get a free movement and I'm gonna be, I think, a little bit evil. Yes, no! a little bit evil. No! I think I'm gonna avoid the crater <laughs> and all of that shenanigan and I'm coming for the commander. Of course you are. And now I'm going to use um, my first action points of the round to make an engage. That's gonna cost me two of them. So you got one left. Yeah. Is the, you check to see if at least one model can get within engagement range. I am. And, and then can. move away. And that means I have two models within an inch. All right, so you've done your engage action, you've moved, you get to strike blows. Now, because I have made the engage action in this fashion to avoid this crater, yeah. one of my models couldn't actually make it within an inch. Yep. He's not gonna get the fight. Okay, so he might survive. He might. <laughs> Unlikely. Unlikely, but possible. So this means I only get four of the attacks. Ooh. And these are armor piercing, aren't they? I need to save all three of these. Luckily, you can actually take them on your <gasps> I will. friends next door. Three inches away? I got these guys over here. I'm gonna take it on these guys. All right. So they've lost their shields, so, has to go, so it goes right to their armor. I'm gonna take it on this guy right here. On a six. Ha! Ah, the first guy saves it. Second guy, on a six. Oh, so he takes how much damage? Three. He's dead. Take him out of there. And I'm also gonna take it on the next guy within three inches. He does not save it either. So he is gone as well. Now, by doing that, I no longer have guys within three inches. So really? you've got more attacks, which I've got have, one more action. You have point. one more action point. So I'm going to spend that on melee. Oh, you get to make a two inch move to get closer to the fight. You're in fight. All three are going to get strike blows this time. I'm too far away to save him. This probably is the death of our poor commander. Let's take him down. 
Uh oh. 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 You've only got to make a couple of sixes. Well, I've got to make both because this does three damage. And yeah. He only has two wounds. Oh boy. Oh, does he have shields? He does have shields. But I guess how many shields he has? One. One. Oh, so shoot. Shields aren't going to save in this case, so i got to make both these sixes. All right. Boxcars. Okay. Here we go. You can do it, Here Nick. Here we go. You didn't nope. do it, Nick. You didn't do it. No, well. No. Nope. Sorry. Bye, Commander. I've got three dudes left. It's time to quit the field. <laughs> Ninja Turtles! Run away! <laughs> I'm gonna choose a concede right here. All right. My a smart commander, who is now dead, would run away at this point. The Batra have won the field. Well done on winning this test game here. How was, was that? fun. I like my, my energy fists. Those they seem flawed. to do the Those trick. Those are scary. <laughs> I think if I had activated my inventory before I activated the exosuit and targeted the guys that were uncloaked, the infantry that was uncloaked, I have a suppressing fire ability, which means that you have to move at half rate. That could have shut them down completely. That would have meant, meant, meant you couldn't get into combat. Yeah, that would have been difficult. I think that would have made all the difference in the world. So learning how to use your special rules and interact with each other and activate at the right time is crucial. There was also another move that I was thinking when you when you first showed it, but being in the crater, it made it a little bit difficult, would be to actually move out and engage me, because I was pretty weak at that point. It would have been surprising, and yeah. You, and you wouldn't be, you couldn't shoot them, but you can charge things that you can't see. Yep. So uh, the engagement move would have yep. allowed you to use your, your knives and possibly exactly. pull me down that way. So this game is coming out on Kickstarter really soon, isn't it? It, it is, um, I'm looking forward to it. So the, the finished stuff might look a little different, but it, the gameplay seems solid. The rules are for free right now. You can go download them and see for yourself how the rule system works. I think it. I think it's well written, to be honest. I really do. I, I, it took me minutes to read through the entire rule set and nothing I felt was unclear or yeah. strange. It all felt really easy to understand, especially as an experienced gamer, I suppose. If you have experience with other war games, you will have no problem picking this up. None whatsoever. If it's your first war game, there, there may be a few confusing things as you get into it for the first time, but I think it'll get pretty clear pretty quick. Although of all the like tabletop miniature war games I've ever gone through the rules of, this feels the simplest for a brand new player. Uh, I'm interested to see future expansions and stuff like that. Yeah. For instance, I would love an ability to get rid of your cloak. I and would I love you not to have that. I've heard that one of the expansions will give us oh, that, so I, I'm looking forward to that. Well, that's something that could happen, absolutely. I am looking forward to trying some of the other races. They look really cool. The background for some of that stuff is, is amazing. But you do seem to like your cloaking from I people. I do. I love aliens, and these guys are great aliens. <laughs> I like the stalwart nature of these humans. I think their suits are really cool. Their tanks are fun looking. Absolutely. Look at that gun. Yeah. Whew. Um, and it's just a matter of, of figuring out all the special rules and how they go together. Now a normal game of this, a typical game, will have some objective play, it'll have a different kind of deployment maps on how you deploy. And full on missions. Full, with, full on uh, missions, exactly. With a variety of objectives that you get to pick yourself based upon what you've put into your list. So if you have skirmishers in your list, yeah. you can do recon objectives. If, if you, you have occupational troops, then you can take, take and hold objectives. Yeah, basically they hold it or superseding other units. And there'll be multiple objectives that you get to pick uh, that are on top of the mission objectives that can really change how you score based upon how you picked your army. It's kind of interesting. It'll be an interesting game to see how it evolves. I'd like to play some more. Let's do it right now. Would you like to play another game? Yeah. Right can I be the humans again? Of course. I'm going to beat you this time. Okay. <laughs> I'll let you win. <laughs> All right. Well, then I guess until we see you next time. Play on. Hey, come on, one, together! Two, okay, one. Until we see you next time. time. Play, Play on! on. <laughs>